My twin sister found a lump on her neck, and I think it's something far worse than a tumor. When Carla and I were nine years old, we stood on opposite sides of the school playground, simultaneously pointing to the same exact spot on the highway just beyond the brutalist steel fence. We didn't know why, and when questioned about it later, we'd both give the same answer. It just felt like something important was about to happen. They had to more or less scrape the poor man from the tarmac. The impact so forceful one of his eyeballs popped out, rolling steadily to a gentle rest right next to the swing set. I guess you'd call it a twin moment. We've had plenty of those since. Some perfectly innocent, like tying ten times in a row playing rock paper scissors, or having a song creep into my head only for my sister to start humming the exact same tune out of nowhere. Others were more sinister in nature however, like the time my uncle died halfway across the country, Carla and I both erupting in tears as he exhaled his last breath, inconsolable for reasons we had no way of explaining, we were inseparably identical, yet. Down the line we still chose different lives, different paths, both inherently knowing we'd stay connected no matter what. Carla always on the road with her music, me sitting in front of a computer with a tablet, both minds inexplicably linked over vast distances. When the lockdown came into effect, forcefully ending Carla's career, at least momentarily, we'd try to catch up at least three times daily, the irony of it being that with her stuck in her apartment across town, we hadn't been closer geographically in years. I woke up that morning to my phone buzzing. It was early too early, and I had a bad feeling when I sleepily registered it was Carla calling. Hey, evil twin. I yawned tiredly. You're up early. Hey, evil twin, Carla said, a slight hint of worry in her tone. How are you holding up? We'd always joke about who was the evil twin. Carla was named after an allegorical demon, Carla from Cheers, and I was named after a literal demon, Lilith from Cheers. I'm sleepy Carla, I complained. Why are you calling so early? Is something wrong? There was a slight pause. Unnoticeable if you didn't know Carla like I did, but to me it was nothing short of a deafening silence. I'm, I'm okay, she said. I just wanted to let you know. I mean, it's probably nothing. Know what? I asked, sitting up in bed. Carla, what is going on? I could hear her breathing heavily, interrupted by deep sighs. This wasn't like Carla at all. She was tough as nails. A bone of fighty badass. I have a lump, she muttered quietly. It's like a cyst or something, on the right side of my neck. The doctors think it's benign, but they can't be sure until the tests come back. It's probably nothing, Lilith, but I just wanted you to know. My mind raced. I'd been having this itch on my neck for days now, like a barely noticeable, continuous prickle, and I immediately knew that the two were somehow connected. What do you mean? I halfway yelled into the phone. Assessed, like a tumor? It isn't a tumor, Lilith, Carla sighed. Well, they didn't call it that anyway. It's probably nothing. I'll know for sure in a few days, but you don't have to worry. I'm your evil twin, evil twin, I murmured softly. I'll always worry. I know, I know, she said. Anyways, I just wanted to let you know. I'll call you when I hear back from the doctors, okay? And I'm sorry I woke you up. Don't worry about it, I sighed. Just, you know, make sure to call me the moment you hear back, okay? Promise, she said. Catch you later. After she hung up I just couldn't go back to sleep. I kept scratching at my neck, the prickle now a constant ache like the mere mention of it had awoken something in me. That wasn't very unusual for us though. Sharing feelings, traumas, even physical ones. It had happened from time to time, and it would slowly fade, more of a nuisance than anything else. I spent my day designing a particularly heinous logo for some inane client who clearly didn't know what he wanted. I'd already sent him half a dozen suggestions, all of them. Conceptually sound, clean and effective, if I do say so myself, but he kept insisting I'd add details that would objectively ruin the design, as long as he pays. I kept thinking to myself, idly plotting out rough sketches that would maybe, maybe, salvage the whole. I guess it happened around noon? I can't be sure, because I can't really remember much before waking up hours later. I know I felt a sharp pain in my neck, 
like the forceful jab of a needle, then a sensation that can't really be described, but it was like someone was slowly, meticulously peeling back my skin, revealing muscles and sinew underneath, then prodding fingers digging into the soft tissue, violently, ripping through tendons and ligaments. I collapsed on the floor in pain, eyes rolling back into my skull, muscles locked, body convulsing. It couldn't have gone on for more than a few seconds, but it felt like a torturous eternity. I woke up to the sound of my phone once more, the faraway chords of a long forgotten tune echoing eerily. In my head, I always had it on silent mode though, which is part of the reason I snapped out of the nightmarish half-sleep in such an alarmed state. Carla? I gasped. What's going on? I can feel it. I can feel the pain. What? She answered, slightly perplexed. Lilith, are you alright? I was just calling to let you know it wasn't a tumor. It isn't cancer. But my neck, I murmured. I felt it, in the neck, something's not right. Listen, it's not cancer, but it's something dot else. Her voice trailed off, and I could barely hear her as she continued. Siddic twin, or triplet? I don't know. Lilith, it's really weird, but not dangerous. They said I need surgery though. Something about the spine, but it's simple enough and they're not expecting any complications. Twin? Triplet? I queried confusedly. What do you mean? Parasitic twin? Triplet, she corrected. Apparently I absorbed our sister in utero? Hey, don't blame me though, she laughed. I've always been the hungry. One. I didn't know what to say, so I didn't say anything. Just sat there staring at my idle screen desperately trying to make sense of what Carla was trying to explain. Look, Lilith, Carla said softly, it's nothing to worry about, just a lump of tissue, no big deal, some slicing and dicing, a few stitches, and I'll be good as new. I have a bad feeling, Carla, I said, painfully getting to my feet, something's not right, something's off. Look, they've scheduled me in for next week, Carla said reassuringly, so relax, I'll keep you posted. Carla. I started, but couldn't seem to find the words. It was like something in the back of my mind was shrouding them, keeping the conscious part of my brain from communicating what I was so vividly feeling, utter dread and terror. Call you later, evil twin, she cooed, abruptly ending the call. I was left staring into the approaching dusk, my entire being encompassed by a hollow feeling of unease and anxiety. I didn't sleep well that night. Last night, I'm not sure I slept at all, a relentless creeping sensation of someone, something, lurking just beyond the periphery of my eyes, periphery of my mind, slithering through every fiber of my body. I lay awake for hours, eyes nervously darting about, focus erratically shifting to every shadow, every passing light, every sound and vibration, no matter the perceived innocence. The moment I felt my mind slipping into the comforting beyond, I felt a shooting pain in my neck again, but this time it was vastly different. This time it spoke. The voice was subtle, submerged, hollow, but unmistakably present. A snarling, malicious, taunting voice, feeding my inner self with fear and madness, soon throwing my already fragile psyche into a stupor of excruciating insanity. I'm not sure I can accurately describe what I saw, because for you it would make no sense. It was like seeing yourself in a mirror. Only there were three of you, three of me, triplets. I was stood in between the other me's, a slightly paler, slightly gaunter me, and as I felt them chewing on my flesh, blood spraying everywhere as the jagged teeth tore through skin and arteries, soon enough shattering bones, severing limbs, I must have jolted awake. My bed was covered in blood. I will swear on this until the day I die. But I had no wounds, no scratches, no marks on my body, whatsoever that could explain it. I ran out of there screaming hysterically. Only one thought ringing true in my mind. I have to call Carla. I must have tried her 20 times before I finally gave up, grabbed my jacket and keys, and bolted down to the car. It was just a 30 minute drive, but to be honest I was in no state to safely operate any vehicle, let alone one that could potentially kill me. The throbbing pain in my neck wouldn't stop either. In fact, I could swear it kept increasing in intensity and potency as I hazardously swerved all over the road in my panicky journey to my sister's apartment. I knew something was wrong the moment I approached her door. The pain was 
unbearable at this point, and it took every last bit of my strength to stay conscious as I feverishly pounded my fists on the door repeatedly. No answer. I desperately fumbled through all the keys on my keychain. Carlo had given me a spare when she moved in three years ago but I'd never had any use for it. What did it look like? Why did I have so many keys? Where the hell did they all fit? Click. Finally, I pulled the door open, stumbling in like a blind drunk, knocking unseen objects over left and right. The pain that previously had been fixated on a certain spot of the neck was now rapidly spreading all the way down the right side of my body, and I was having a hard time focusing on anything else. I burst into the living room in a tormented daze, but instantly snapped into fear-fueled focus the moment I noticed the harrowing figure of Carla on the couch. Get out, Lilith, she whispered hoarsely. Please, leave, please, please, please. She blinked at me through tear-filled eyes, a look of utter dread and suffering manifested on her pale ashen face. I took a step back in shock as I noticed the lump on her neck. It wasn't just a lump of tissue, it was a face, half face, buried under her skin, stretching and squirming, the bulbous nature of ascending cold shivers down my spine. I can't keep it in. Carly yelled hysterically. It wants, out, please, Lilith, just get the fuck out of here. Carla. I whimpered incoherently. Carla, what, what? What is that thing? It's the try before she could finish the room exploded in a crescendo of blood as the half face burst through her neck, dragging with it half of her spine. No, not her spine. Theirs. Their spine. The half face. Abomination. The abhorrent parody of, of, of us, suddenly on the floor, wriggling around like some nightmarish worm, one misshapen hollow eye focusing on one thing, and one thing only. Me. My sister's mutilated corpse slumped to the ground, the wound in her neck, the gaping hole in her neck. Oh god, her body still convulsing in sickening death. Spasms. I knew there was nothing I could do, nothing that would save her, so I didn't. I didn't even try. I left her there, and I fucking ran. Whatever that fucking thing was, whatever it wants. I can't ever face it again. I can't let it find me. Sitting here in the darkness of my apartment, I know it won't be long now. It has already started. Just tiny at first, you know, like a pimple. Nuisance really. But it growls. Never stops. On the left side of my neck, the forming of the other half of my parasitic triplet, 